Hi there and welcome to another Critter Corner and this week we are going to be covering part two of the commonly asked questions about snakes. This is a very difficult question to answer because snakes generally when they're caught they're killed and they're skinned and the skin is easily stretched so you'll hear stories about 30 foot um, python very rare in nature to any, get anywhere near that size. Um, I think the most reliable sized snake caught and measured while it was still alive was about 23 feet, something like that, 23, 24 feet. That was a, um, a reticulated python. And there is also the uh, anaconda, the green anaconda in South America, which is the heaviest snake. It's got a real bulk to it. And that is about 18 to 20 feet. 21 feet, something like that. So those are the largest, two largest snakes known uh, currently. The largest venomous snake is the king cobra. King cobras get to about 18 feet, which is huge for a venomous snake with a, uh, you know, a, a head the size of a man's fist. So you'll know it if you come across an 18 foot king cobra. And they also can raise their bodies up in the sort of classical cobra position. Uh, and that is about six feet off the ground. So you've got a six feet off the ground, 18 foot, deadly snake, um, definitely not one to, uh, to get near. Now it is possible for the, the largest snakes to eat humans, um, although uh, a fully grown man, it'd be difficult because of the shoulders, they, they find it very hard to get, once they get to this point, um, it's a problem. But they can easily kill you uh, by coiling around you and constricting you in the normal way. So reticulated python or a green anaconda can easily kill a human. I've got a question for you actually, Jurassic Mark. What's that? One of my friends was asking about a story she heard, you've probably heard it too, about a python climbing into bed with its owner, sizing it up to eat it. Yes, that's not true. <laughs> I said it. I told her it wasn't true. I'm going to make her watch this video. Yeah, it's not true. Um, climbing into bed, or more accurately, sliding into bed, I think, um, is more to just get to the, the heat, the heat source. Told Go you somewhere, actually. going somewhere nice and warm. Um, sizing up owners is not something snakes do. They don't see us as a prey item. Um, the only reason it would constrict you in, is, is probably because it's a mistake um, or uh, you uh, you just look like a threat and it decides to attack, but generally they don't go for humans at all. So anti-venoms are used if you get bitten by obviously a venomous snake um, with quite high levels of toxicity. So you wouldn't use it for a snake that has quite low levels of toxicity that's not really gonna do much, but if it's gonna be quite dangerous to have that venom going around your body, then you can get an anti-venom injected. And the way that anti-venoms are made, so they kind of, they commonly came into use in the 1950s, but were starting to be made in the 1800s. So they've been around for a fair amount of time and they're quite easily made as well. So you put the, you inject the venom of, in this case, a snake into an animal. You can use like maybe a cow, if you've got a cow lying around and it will start producing antibodies for that particular venom. And then once that cow has produced a lot of nice antibodies, they get extracted, purified, and that's how you get your antivenom. And then you can use that um, with whatever particular snake it is. And if you've got any venomous snakes as well, a lot of people tend to have antivenom kits, so not all the hospitals are gonna have all antivenoms for all different snakes, um, so if people do have venomous snakes in captivity in their own vivariums, then they'll tend to have their own anti-venom specific snake kits. Yeah, and that last bit's a good point because if you, a lot of people in this country have a dangerous wild animal license, which is called a DWA. And if you keep a black mamba or king cobra or something and you get bitten and you turn up at Reading Hospital saying I've been bitten, they are unlikely to have anything that can help you. So that's why lots of um, licensed uh, owners of venomous snakes in this country would have uh, a kit, as Emily said, to take to hospital with them. Uh, 
are snakes solitary or do they cohabit? And I think we answered in the last Q&A that there are dens and uh, rumbas. Rumbas and rattlesnakes. Rumbas and rattlesnakes. Uh, and they do cohabit with each other, of course. That's why you get a rumba or a den. Um, usually in the winter when they're um, hibernating or brewmating is the, is the real term for that. So there'll be lots of them in a place and they'll just be asleep essentially, or, or they'll turn down their metabolism. But there are snakes that cohabit with other animals. So um, one that's very common in the United States is uh, different types of rattlesnakes, uh, Western Diamondbacks, Mojave snake, Mojave rattlesnakes. They will actually cohabit with um, gopher tortoises, which are small flat tortoises that live in the um, desert regions of the southwest of the USA. And they will share a burrow. So there's no kind of um, agitation or biting or anything going on there. The, the tortoise comes out when it needs to come out and the snake comes out when it come, needs to come out and they will be in the same burrow and they will live together. Uh, I, nobody really knows why that is because the gopher tortoise doesn't necessarily bring mice back um, and the, 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 the rattlesnake certainly doesn't bring anything back that the tortoise can eat. So it's kind of a strange one, but probably to do more with the fact that the gopher tortoise digs a nice deep burrow and the snake likes that. So there's probably just moving in and saying, you know, I'm, I'm here now, so this is my place. Um, but they do cohabit. Um, so there are four native species of snake in the UK. Um, so the first one's the adder. So this is the only venomous snake in the UK. Um, it's quite unlikely that you'll see one in the wild. They tend to be in kind of leaves and grassy marshy areas. Um, and hide from humans as well. So if you see one, take a picture and send it in. We'd be more than happy to have a look at it for you. Absolutely. Um, but quite unlikely for you to find it. Um, they also aren't gonna attack you unless you agitate them either. So if you do see one, snap a quick picture, but then just leave it alone, walk away and you'll be absolutely fine. Don't muck with it. Don't, don't mess with it. Don't muck with it. Um, so we've also got grass snakes. So when you think of well, I know when I certainly think of snakes in the UK, one of the first ones that comes to mind is the grass snake. And um, so they're quite common, non-venomous, so don't worry about it. But again, it's quite unlikely that you're actually gonna see them. Uh, a lot of snakes are quite shy. They don't like the attention. They just wanna chill on their own. So if you, if you do see one, again, send a, send a pick in to Critical on HQ. And that will be fab, we'll feature in our next video. Um, but again, quite unlikely. Um, they tend to feed on things like toads and, and frogs as well, so living around those kinds of areas in the wild and in some nice protected national parks as well, probably. Um, we also have smooth snakes, so um, again, native to the UK, and they're, as you can probably guess, quite smooth, especially in coloration, and they tend to have some patterning as well on their smooth side, which is just the top side of their skin. Um, and then we also have, this one's a new entry as of 2017, a secondary species of grass snake called the barred grass snake. Um, again, non-venomous, um, obviously very similar to a grass snake because they're very similar species. But just a fun fact, that got recognised as a separate species in 2017. All right. I know. So that's answered that. And I think the other thing to mention again is not to touch them um, because an adder will bite and it is venomous but it's not massively dangerous to an adult uh, and a grass snake will cover you in really evil smelling musk, musk um, sort of poo smelling you'd smell like poo for two or three days if you muck around with a grass snake so if you see any snakes the best thing is to take a picture and walk away uh, as chances, chances are the snake's going to move away very quickly when it hears you anyway but uh, just don't pick them up don't do anything with them let them be um, in their natural environment and uh, you'll be fine. You won't smell like poo or you won't get bitter, which are two things you want to avoid. A lot of people, for some quite bizarre reason, think that snakes are slimy. Don't really know why. Um, they're actually very dry and their texture depends on the kind of scales they have. So you can get snakes that have really smooth scales um, you can also get snakes that have keeled scales, so um, our lovely Pugsley, the western albino hognose. Here he is, has got keeled scales, so he feels a bit more rough. Um, 
definitely not slimy. If you move your finger across the opposite way to the scales, it feels very weird. He probably doesn't like it too much either. Um, but yeah, it's quite a nice texture actually. And keeled means it's got a ridge in the middle of the scale. So it feels rough to the, to the finger, doesn't mm. it? And then take a guy like Sheldon here, our Woma Python, who, um, if I can get him to stop moving around, he has a pretty smooth skin. So um, despite his nice coloration there, his tiger stripes, um, he feels very smooth. Uh, and this is because he lives in desert sandy areas. He doesn't really dig much. He goes down crevices and rocks and things that you can find. So he, he has a very smooth um, skin. You can see his head there is uh, extremely shiny. So if you imagine your fingernail shined up, that's kind of what his head feels like. So there's no, there's no moisture here at all. I can hold these snakes all day long um, and you, you won't feel anything. It's, it's basically just like tiny little fingernails. Um, it's quite funny as well, because I've got a really smooth, like, blanket upstairs, almost swathy, and he cannot go on that because he just doesn't move anywhere. He just he can't flops have, about. He doesn't have any traction on it. Whereas Pugsy is fine with it, and he also likes digging, so his little shovel nose and his keeled scales help him dig. And one thing that is another fact about snakes, which makes them really good pets, um, apart from what we've already told you in some ways, is that they're hypoallergenic. So if you are allergic to any animals, you won't be to a snake or even a lizard actually, so they don't give off any uh, skin flakes or anything like that. It's uh, no allergies to snakes that we're aware of anyway. So we hope you've enjoyed those facts and uh, we have a different animal coming. It's not a snake, not but, a snake. but we've got to make the film. Um, but this will be a good one. There's some good footage, a uh, very interesting animal that we both love and we're going to be putting that out soon. So see you next time. Bye.